Hey guys, what's going on? Matt here and welcome back to the Black Ops Remod Tools scripting series. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on moving objects. Now the example for this video is going to be a drawer, like a desk, um, where you can go up to the desk, you can open up the drawer and then you can pick up an item out of that drawer. Um, so it sort of requires us to move a few objects uh, to make it look like the drawer's opening uh, and then picking things up. So what we need to do to begin with is open up our map script file. So pretty much the same as each of these has been at the moment. We'll go to the Black Ops 3 route, go to user maps, our map name, go to scripts, ZM, and open up our map name.gsc. There we go. And we'll go down to just under this main and just make our new function uh, threading in here. So level thread, uh, maybe like desk draw. There we go. And down here we'll make our function. Uh, we'll just call it desk draw, same as above. There we go. Awesome. So I'm going to open up Radium just because we're going to kind of need this at the same time um, to sort of piece things together. Um, so to begin with, uh, just supposed to wait for that to open. Actually, yeah, it should be done. There we go. Thought it might have taken a second longer. So ahead of time, I have made, I say made, I've put some models into the map just to make this desk. It's got individual drawers just so we can move them. We're only going to be focusing on one of them. So for this video, I'm just going to be making this drawer open um, and have like an item in there that we can then go ahead and pick up. Um, easy as that. So... First of all, what we're going to need to do is put a trigger into the map. Now, I should know nothing here is like, you know, I've not done anything. I've literally just placed the models into the map. We will still need to make these script models and do everything else. So to begin with, let's go and select a trigger. We're going to be using a use trigger for this. So we're going to go ahead and do trigger and use. Place this roughly where we sort of expect the player to sort of stand. And we'll go over to Entity Info, but exit game view just so we can actually see it. I'm going to change the hint activate so we can get rid of that hand icon. I'm just going to give it a target name, let's say draw trigger. There we go. So we'll copy this name. And next what we need to do is just jump into the script and sort of set up this trigger. So we'll do trig. Pretty much the same way we've done um, the other use trigger. So we've got end uh, with the target name in there, and then the second one being target name. There we go. Now we're going to require, uh, yeah, let's require the user to actually look at this trigger. So trig uh, use trigger require look at, there we go. Put that in there. Uh, next bit, let's actually, you know, display some text for them to sort of be, uh, be told that you can open up this drawer. So trig set hint string, the same way we've done hint strings earlier. So we do press and, and one, so that's going to be our sort of activation button, uh, to open draw. There we go. Uh, the next step, of course, will be to actually wait for this to be triggered. So we'll go ahead and do trig wait till. Trigger, there we go. Um, we're not going to need to put the player in here because the, the drawers will get opened regardless of who does it. Um, you could, if you wanted to, have one player open it and the next player then will go and pick up the item. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we don't need player uh, in this case. We can just keep it as trigger. The next bit, what we need to do is, of course, now start to interact with the, with the draw. So we let's take out the double space there. So to do this, what we're going to do is click, click, and we're going to select the draw. Uh, I'm just going to convert this over to a script model. So we can use it in the script. And I'm going to select the trigger, then the draw, press W, and you can see that's now targeting the Draw, just like we did in the last one with the damage trigger, um, we can now use it quite easily. So all we're going to do now is go over to the script. We'll go and now set up that draw. Now I'm going to do it just before we do the trigger, just because we can set things up ahead of time. We don't really need to do it as soon as the trigger is activated. 
there's no real benefit to this massively. Um, I just prefer to do as much as I can beforehand. Um, I just find it a, a little bit cleaner to sort of, you know, I guess, write all this. So uh, we do draw, which would be the draw model equals get ent uh, trig dot target with the target name like that because of course we have the uh, the draw is now linked to this so the trigger is targeting the draw and because we did that you know they kind of reference what the trigger references the draw so we can we can do it based on the trigger which is uh nice and uh, nice and useful there uh, next what we need to do is of course move this draw now so we've grabbed the draw we're now waiting until it's been activated so after here we now need to actually move it and we've actually got a really handy function to do this so if i just do draw and then move you'll see we have move x y and z here now these are exactly what you think they might do they move things in uh, the x y or z uh, direction so if we go over into radian and just select the draw, I'm just going to move it out a little bit just so we can sort of see it on its own. If I select it, you'll see we have uh, three arrows. We've got one with Y, we've got one with, you can't really see it very well there, but it says Z. You can just see it above it. So the blue one is Z in this, uh, in this instance. And we've got X over here. Um, so as we move the draw, in the in this in this case it will be the y direction because we're moving it out of the uh, of the desk um if we do this with the entity info open and we pay uh, attention to the origin first number is x then it's y and then it's z if we move it in the y direction so that's the middle number you'll notice the number is going down as we move it out so what i need to do is i need to move it in the y direction but in a negative direction so this is going to be going down, okay? So I'm going to use probably 12. Uh, we're currently on an eight grid. And I think if we do it once, that's not very much, but the second time is a bit too much. So we'll do it one, eight. So one, um, one unit of eight and then half, so 12. Just so it's enough to make it a bit more noticeable. Uh, you can read the experiment, I guess, though, with, uh, with how much you wanna move it. So we're gonna move it in the Y direction by a mi minus 12. The second part of this though is the time it takes. So it doesn't really matter um, what number you put in here. It, I guess it's dependent on how you want it. I'm going to make it take one second though to open. You can have it really quick and do it in like half a second or you can have it really slow, completely up to you. I'm just gonna put one in here though, just so it takes one second to open it in um, negative 12 units in the Y direction. So that is going to be moving the draw out. Next, what we need to do is just wait for one second before we do anything, just because we want this uh, this move to complete before anything else happens. Now, I did mention that we were going to be putting something in the draw. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and put that item in the draw because it's basically going to be doing the same thing. So I'm just going to deselect this by pressing escape. Go ahead and go over to my models. Um, and I'll just do, I'll, I'll stick a stack of folders in there, I guess. Um, textures weren't loaded very well then. Uh, so we'll grab this stack of folders. That should be fine. Put that into the map, into the draw even. And just sort of position this just so it looks about right. There we go. Now what we need, what we now need to do is go ahead and convert this over to a script model, like so. And very, very similar to what we did with the trigger to the draw, we can actually do to the draw and the, these folders. So if we select the draw and then select the folders and press W, we now have the trigger targeting the draw. And now the draw targets the folders. So what we can now do is we can now set up the folders. So folders equals get ent. We need to do this after we've already gotten the draw because we're going to be using the draw to get the folders. So we can now do, uh, instead of doing trig.target, and now be draw.target. Second one, of course, is target name. 
like so. So what it's going to do is going to drag the draw, drag, it's going to grab the draw based on the trigger. And then it's going to uh, grab the folders based on the draw. So that way, you know, you don't have loads of target names that you need to manually sort of put into this. You can just have each one sort of targeting each other. I just find it a bit easier. If you do want to go ahead and uh, put in like, you know, target names manually, feel free. It's not a problem. Um, I just prefer to do it like this. So we've, we've got the folders. We're waiting until we've triggered the trigger. The draw opens. We now need to also move the folders out um, at the same time as the draw, just to make it look like, look like they're both moving together. So we're going to do uh, folders, move wide, it'll be minus 12 again in one second. So pretty much the exact same that we did with the draw, um, just obviously for each of them. So that, that's pretty much that set up. Now what we need to do is once the draw opens, we now of course want to update this text to say, you know, pick up folders or something once the draw has been opened. So just after here, we're going to go ahead and update this trigger uh, text. So trig set hint string uh, to be press and and one to, I guess, take folders. Seems fairly reasonable. Um, now, of course, we now need to wait again for that trigger to be activated. So you, you can do this multiple times. You know, you don't have to only wait for it once. Uh, we're going we're going to now wait for this trigger to be activated again so trigger what trig wait till we still don't need the player in this context it can be anyone who does this but now once this has now been triggered uh, we now want to be deleting everything um so we don't want to be deleting the draw because we've opened the draw the only things we want to be deleting or you know removing from the map are the stack of folders because we're picking them up um, and the actual trigger itself, so it, you know, so it doesn't look like you can do anything extra with it. So, do folders delete and trig delete. So then, once this has fully been sort of ran through, the uh, the draw will just be there um, in the desk open. Um, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and I guess add like a second bit to this, where you know, I guess you know, press and hold, uh, well, press the button to like close the draw maybe, in which case you'd just be doing basically the same thing just in the positive direction. So you, you, you know, you'd just be taking the minus out of here. Um, completely up to you, but for this example, we'll just open it and pick up the folders. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we'll just select these and just put them back into the, the desk. I simply just took them out just so it was easy to see. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Next thing I'm going to do is just close down Radiant. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to go and do a full compile of the map. Uh, and once this is done, um, I'll show you guys in game uh, this all working. Okay, so over in game, let's go over to the desk. You can see we got press F to open draw. You can open up the draw. Both items uh, slide out of the draw. And you can see the, uh, the string has updated. So we can press F to take folder. And then we then remove the folder from the uh, from the drawer. Um, if I do go up to it again and press F, which I'm doing right now, nothing nothing happens. Um, I guess you know the code has been ran fully. Um, so that is that. Uh, of course, any questions you have, please leave them in the comments, and I'll do what I can do there. Uh, but other than that, hopefully this has helped, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.